In today's science class, we are going to be talking about why things fly. This idea is going to be linked to aerodynamics. When we think about aerodynamics, we're going to think about aero, air, and dynamics. And dynamics, we'll know from thermodynamics, means the movement of things. So thermodynamics is all about the movement of heat. Aerodynamics is all about the movement of air. So when we think about this, we're going to think about something a bit weird that we'll see in our day-to-day -day life, which is that some things fly... And some things don't. <laughs> some things fly. And some things don't. <laughs> Which, when you think about it, is a little bit strange. Because the things that you might think would fly would be really light things like feathers or paper. And the things that you might think would not fly would be the heavy things like big lumps of iron. And yet, very light things like paper, they don't fly. And very heavy things like massive iron airplanes that they do fly. So something strange must be going on here. There's something that we must not be understanding. As you know, Ryan the rabbit can fly. So we're going to ask Ryan the rabbit to see if we can work out what might be going on. So, here we have Ryan the rabbit. And we can see there are different forces at play on Ryan the rabbit. Here, look, he's flapping his wings. Flapping his wings is pushing down. And because every action has an equal and opposite reaction, that is pushing him up. Great. But he's not just going up. He's going up. He's going down. That is something must be pulling him down. That must be gravity. Gravity is pushing him down. Thrust is pushing him up. So, it must be the case that if these forces are in balance, Ryan the rabbit will stay perfectly still. If these forces are unbalanced, for example, if Ryan the rabbit were to try to give a lift to us, then suddenly his mass would increase. And his lift would be insufficient to hold up his mass. And so he would start to decline. <clears throat> On the other hand, if he were to increase his lift, he would go up and up and up until he reached the moon. But that's not the only thing in play. We have lift, and we have weight pulling down with gravity. But also, we have to ask, is our Ryan the rabbit moving forwards? Or is he moving backwards? So, here, look, he is pushing backwards with his arms, and he is creating thrust. Thrust is the force moving him forward. And then we have drag. Drag is the pressure from the air moving him backwards. So we have thrust pushing him forwards. Drag moving him backwards. Thrust pushing him forwards. 
drag, moving him backwards, lift, pushing him upwards, gravity pulling him downwards. No! So, when we're answering our questions about aerodynamics and about whether things fly, we're going to think about this idea of balance or forces again. If, for example, you had Tommy Chew. Tommy! And that was gravity. We would find that it would be unbalanced and our airplane will plummet to the ground, destroying the plane and killing all the people on it. We were to find thrust would be not too great. For example, Jackazard here could be thrust. We would find that our airplane would blast into space and never be seen or heard of again. So for things to be balanced, we need a balance of the Charizard of thrust, thrust with the Gravity force of Tommy Two. Tommy! Then we'll be balanced and our airplane would neither go up nor go down. If we want our airplane to go up, then we need a little bit more thrust. Job is hard. Now, if we want our airplane to go down, we need a little bit more force from gravity. Tommy Two. So, here, look, we're going to balance these two forces against. If we want our airplane to go forward, we have to balance the forces of thrust here being played by Smilita with the forces of drag here being played by Sean Ceratops. So, if I have my balance again, got my balance here, if I just have thrust then my airplane will go faster and faster and faster until it breaks the speed of light and goes back in time. Whereas if I just have drag, my airplane will just stay exactly where it is. In order to maintain the speed of my airplane to be constant, we need a balance of force and drag. My balance of force, of thrust and drag means my airplane speed will not increase. Oh, it's getting faster, it's getting faster, it's getting faster. Oh, slower. Oh, same speed. Slower, slower, slower. Oh, faster, faster, faster airplane. It crashed. Oliver Buzz, can you tell me how many limbs do you have? 72. Great. Oliver Puss has 72 limbs. Oliver Puss, can you tell me what time it is? Great. Oliver Puss says the time is dance o'clock. So, remember, make sure you answer those questions correctly to show that you actually watched the video. For our experiment, we're going to build an airplane and we're going to vary one thing about our airplane and we're going to power the airplane by air power. You can see air power there, pretty good at providing thrust for our balloon, uh, not very good at providing a direction for that thrust. So basically my aircraft, it goes up and then it goes all the way around the place because there's no direction. So the direction we're going to try to provide by some kind of wings. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some kind of tube as the fuselage, the main body part of my airplane. For this, I'm going to start with a piece of paper could be a bit of card, that's fine, and with some scissors. And we're just going to cut through the paper like this, and we're going to make a kind of, just a, a line here, look. Obviously, be careful with your scissors. You never know when an Oliver Puss will try to cut off your finger.
or indeed poke out your eye. So here, look, we end up with our little piece of paper and we're going to roll that into a tube. So here's my bit of paper here. Oliver Buzz is going to help me roll it into a tube. He tells me he's excellent at it. I'm a bit sceptical myself. He doesn't really appear to have any fingers, so I'm not really sure if he's going to succeed, but we'll find out. Well, I mean, fair enough to Oliver Puss. That, that is quite a good tube that he's managed to create there. Pretty decent. Little bit of a tube there. You can see. See right through it, no problem. Seal that tube up so that one side is open, the other side is closed. And that way we should be able to stick a straw inside. If your tube is not... If your tube is not in fact big enough, or is too big for the straw, you have made a terrible tube mistake. And this is the thrust that we're going to make for our airplane. Great! The next thing I need to do is make some wings, so I get my bit of paper. Oliver Plus insists that he is an excellent user of scissors, so he's just going to have a go at making this into a nice triangle shape for him. And uh, once again, in defense of Oliver Plus, that is a pretty good triangle that he's managed to make there. So he is in fact an expert at scissors, like he says. Got my fuselage, got my wings attached. So now, this should be pretty good at flying as an airplane. Let's test it out. Take my straw. Give it a shot. Great. Come to writing a hypothesis. We're going to think about the balance of forces and the different things that we could vary. Bigger straw, more thrust. More thrust, maybe my airplane will go further. Smaller straw, less thrust. Maybe my airplane will go less far. Hmm. Bigger wings, more lift, but also more drag, more air hitting into the wings, and more force of gravity pulling down. Maybe my airplane will go further, maybe it will go less far. Write your hypothesis using these ideas of lift, and gravity, and thrust, and drag. Think about the balance of the forces when you're writing a hypothesis and your conclusion and understand where you might have gone wrong.